Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody that's watching me right now. Welcome to my channel, The Kenyan American Home. And uh, I know our people back home are confused because, especially our people who want to come to the U.S. Because there's two groups of people. One group of people is saying, don't come to America because, man, life is difficult, distress, depression, loneliness, you have to work, 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 work. And then you have this other group of people that are saying, hey, come over. You know, these opportunities, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's America, life is beautiful, come over. And it's kind of like, who do we believe in? These people have been going on back and forth, back and forth about all the bills, all having to work, all these multiple jobs, and, and on and on and on and on. And I know my people back home are like, so who do we believe? Who do we believe? And here's the thing, it, perception is very important, and it really depends on the glasses that somebody is wearing and the opinion that they have about life in America. We, you know, we don't all have the same experience. Some people came to America and life was really good for them. Some people came to America, they fell into immigration trouble. Life has really been difficult to get them to a place where they can you know, just work and not having to deal with immigration and papers and all those so many things. And so, you know, and so someone who came in with a, with a green card is very different than somebody who just came in with a visit visa and then ultimately got their green card through all these processes they had to go to. Somebody who came into school with a full scholarship is very different than somebody who came to school and had to work their way out of school. And so it really does depend on what glasses somebody is wearing. And so this, it's, there's no straightforward answer. I don't think we will get to a straightforward answer on life in America. But this is one thing I always say. Life in America is how you make it. I always say life in America is like a buffet. You can pick and choose what you want. It's how you make it. What you decide to do. Yeah, because then, you know, in the same sentence, these people, eh, so, okay, so these people are, are portraying this beautiful life in America, but also in the same way, these people are portraying this life, this hard life in America, but they're not going back home. And you're like, okay, so if life is that difficult, if life is that bad, why don't you come over back home to your home countries? But no, these people are not going to go back home. And there's this, this one thing I, I always say is information is the best thing that somebody can give you, especially when you come to America, better than money. Because with the good information, man, with good information, somebody has launched you into another dimension. Because what a lot of people lack is good information, man. Yeah, because, so let me take this camp of people who are talking about, you know, life is depressing and bills and having to work, work, all these so many things. And you'll notice, if you go dig deeper into all these people who are saying this, and I am going to make the assumption, remove this, uh, this unique situation of people without status, immigration, you know, immigration start, uh, good immigration status of papers. L remove that anomaly. And then let's talk about somebody who, who can legally work in America. Okay? So these are the people we're talking about. So you came in here with a good visa, with good papers. Okay? Whether you, whether you came in with a green card or whether you, uh, you, you've, you're, you're walking your way towards that, but you can still go to work. One of the things you will find very common about these people who are complaining about how hard life is, is if you dig into their lives, you'll notice is they have been caught up in what you would call it's the American system. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people live beyond their means, unfortunately. A lot of people live beyond their means. A lot of people want to drive cars they cannot afford, want to live in houses they cannot afford. They should not be living in. But they still do. And then, ultimately, you're complaining. So I have to work all these jobs to be able to just to break even. 
but they're not stepping back to see. But, what, but why do I even have to do that? Is there something wrong with my math? And, you know, I'm a, I'm a CPA in America. I'm a certified public accountant. And one of the things is, I, you know, and, if, and l let me recommend this to anybody who is coming to the U.S. Financial Peace University. Man, Financial Peace University will help you. As an immigrant, a new immigrant, this will help you. Because it's simple math. Simple math says, if I make $10, okay, and I spend $5, on rent and utilities, and then I spend another two dollars on taxes, I spend three dollars on you know, spend three dollars on on what on, on, on credit card, uh, and you know, and, and a car, you know, all those debts, card, whether it's a car note or something. So you have five dollar mortgage. And, and utility and what well, or rental utilities two on on taxes that's seven dollars and then three dollars you're spending on uh you know your car note whatever credit card debt you have that brings up to ten dollars so that's already wiped off the money you made okay but you don't stop there two dollars you want to do shopping you know buy new things and then three dollar you send back home to Africa, to your people. So what, what, what happens here? You've made $10, and then you've spent $15. You are at a deficit of $5. So then next month, because now you're starting in a negative position, what you have to do is, A, okay, you have to work extra hard to, A, pay this $5 that you're inheriting, from the previous month, but also make the bills for the $10, you know, make the bills for the next month. Okay, so you get an extra job, work extra shifts, you get $15 the next month. And then get $15 and then still spend $15. You are, or maybe spend $16 the next month because now they want you to build a bigger house in back in your home country. So you keep accumulating debt and you keep accumulating jobs. And you're struggling. This, so life is going to be, it's going to be hard because A, you, you don't have a good work-life balance. All you do is work, work, work. No social life, nothing. Depression kicks in, loneliness and all those so many things. And then, oh yeah, Obviously, life is going to be hard. But why? Because you haven't sat back and actually looked at the choices you've decided to make in your life. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If this $5, if this $5 house and utilities is too much for me to pay for myself, why am I still living by myself? Yeah? Why don't I get a roommate and then cut this five dollar into into half? And now instead of paying five, I'm paying two point five. So I've already reduced my debt from you know from five dollars to to two and a half. Let me cut on things I don't need. Let me not send. Let me not send three dollars back home. Let me send them fifty cents. Let me cut on my shopping. Before you know it, you've cut all those things you don't need to fit into, into your bill. But that's the problem. That's what a lot of people don't want to do is they do not want to sit down and just do this simple math. We're all living beyond our means. And like if you shine a light on, on, on these people, I'm, I'm very sure you will find that. They're driving big cars living in these luxurious houses. But no, they have the ego to say, I cannot live with somebody else. They have the ego to say, I cannot drive that, you know. I cannot just drive any car. I need to drive a Range Rover. Why? Because I need to keep up appearances with them. Yeah? My people back home. My people back home expect me to, be <laughs> to have made it. But you haven't made it, my brother. You haven't.
You haven't made it. Ah, that is the problem. The problem is not that. Life is, life is hard everywhere. Life is hard in America. Life is hard back in Africa. But man, you have to, we have to, yeah, you, you, you bring in your effort, man. You bring in your A-game, your work ethic, you work hard. At least that's one of the things, beautiful things about America. If you work hard, you get rewarded. Unlike back home. Unlike back home. So me, what I would tell the camp, especially the camp of people who are complaining, complaining, and telling people don't come here, discouraging people from coming here, telling people to stay back home, and all those so many things, don't come here, life is difficult. S step back and look at your life. Are you making choices that don't make any sense at all? Hmm? If you cannot afford to drive that car, trade it in. Get a car you can afford. And then what happens is you build yourself. Build yourself up to get to that point where you can actually afford to take out that, you know, buy that car even without a debt. Just pay cash because you have the money you're able, you can afford, you've saved up or all those so many things. Live within your means. Yeah? Stop painting these pictures of your wealthy to the people back home. And you're not. Tell people back home the truth. Even that's, that's, a, that's a very difficult thing. But people back home will never understand the truth. But don't overpromise. Don't, yeah, man, don't keep up appearances. A time will come when you've built yourself to that level and it's, it's no longer a problem. It's no longer a problem for you to... to to live that life and for people to see you living that life. But until then, man, you need, to, you need to make your math math. If your math is not mathing, you're doing something wrong. And then there's also this other thing of, hey, man, you cannot just come to America. Stay in the same job. I understand this starting or you want to go work in a group home and all those and starting and you don't level up. You don't advance yourself. You need to advance yourself. Because when you look at this, this equation too of, of making $10 and spending $15, if you look at this, this thing, there's something, called, hey, not only, do you, not only do you have to work extra to make up for this 15 but maybe if you go to school, get a certificate, keep rising, you can make this $10, $20, working the same hours. Why? Because you've leveled up. You've gone back to school. Yeah. Or maybe you've changed fields. You found something that you excel in. You can do better in. Information. Information is the most expensive commodity here in the U.S. And that's unfortunate. That's what a lot of people don't. Because a lot of people, our people especially, they don't want to invest in good information. They don't. We all want to come here and make it just like that, without putting in any effort. <laughs> but unfortunately, you have to put effort, man. You have to understand where am I going? What works where I'm going? What works for me? Because what works for you doesn't necessarily work for somebody else. We all have different shades of glasses, but all of us, we can be successful here in America depending on the choices we decide to make. The choices we decide to make. So me, me, I'm telling my people back home, man, here, invest in good information. But come, come over, man. So it's, yeah, I've, there's plenty of space, I think, to accommodate everybody. Plenty of space. Plenty, there's so much growth to be done, so, many, so much money to be made, so, hey, so much life to be lived in America. But just make sure you, you know, just who you're listening, who is pouring into your cup is very important. Because if you let people, people's, you know, people make their own choices. Don't let, don't let other people's choices define 
your life. If they made, if they made these choices, that's their life. You can listen and then choose to make other choices, or you can listen and implement in what they're saying. But that's what I would say. That would, that's what I would say, man. It's, there's opportunities in, in America that are not there back home. Unfortunately, it's, you know, I talk about leadership and all that stuff. And, man, some of us, <laughs> some of us, we don't, yeah, some of us, we don't have that. We don't have the time to wait for Africa to rise again. I feel like if, you know, if you're called to stay back home and make the change and be the change, do that. Do that. Everyone is called into, you know. Yeah, I feel like where you're called, you'll have grace there. I don't feel called to go back home and help change the systems. But if you feel led to stay home and change the systems, please do that. Because God's grace is sufficient. Yeah? So, whatever you got from that, I don't know if I even, I don't even know if I made any sense. Or I just... But I hope, I hope you got something out of that. I mean, I would tell you, man, I would, as, as one of those people who has broken the generational curse of poverty, and I would tell you, man, America is a land of opportunity. There is so much more here. But you have to be careful. You have to be really careful about the choices you make and the information that you, you know, who's, who's, who's pouring into you. Who's pouring into you. Don't listen to everything you hear. Okay? And then don't just implement everything they tell you. Here, make your own choices and live your life so that when you sit back and say, hey, you know, I made these choices and I can accept them. I can accept them. So that's my, that's my two cents. Life can be this camp and life can also be this camp. But don't let any of them dictate how your life is going to be. You make your own choices. Choose what you, yeah? Choose how your life is going to be. And thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you'll become part of, you know, the Kenyan American Home family and hit that notification bell. And you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And I'll be doing more videos, more videos, yeah. Uh, more content coming, more content coming. So, but thank you so much for watching me and thank you for your love and your support, your likes, your comments. You know, leave me that. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Leave me a share. Share this with somebody that you think might need this. But thank you so much. All right.